getting back into finishing up this chapter, we're going to be talking about distribution of goods today, which covers a lot of different ground. It's not as simple as what it sounds. All right, so you've already gotten these key terms down. I don't think that there's anything complicated about them. So we're going to go ahead and get started. You got two minutes, write, and then you continue writing once I begin speaking. All right, so the easy, the, none of this is easy, actually, I should say that. What is, what you need to understand is the way that a capitalist economy works is that the economy actually relies on businesses working with other ones. And distribution of goods is a very clear example of that. So for, even though like you might make a product, and that's great, but that's only one portion of the economy. You need to make sure that you get first that product to the store and then or to a place where people can buy it. And then at the same time, too, you need to make sure that people know to buy your product. So that's what sets up that system of additional business businesses. So you have the manufacturers, then you have the people who get the product from the factory to the actual point of purchase. And then you have additional companies that try and get people excited or interested in buying that product. So in transporting those goods, a lot of things are very uh, stagnant, meaning that they, we haven't advanced a whole lot of that technology over the years. We still use railroads to carry mass amounts of goods, uh, particularly raw materials. Uh, that's what we use railroads for. Airlines are used to transport individual packages. We use highways and trucks to get large quantities, but these are prepackaged items, typically not raw materials. And then we still do still use rivers and oceans. That's why New Orleans is an important port, or the New Orleans area is important in the for the entire country, is because we have we connect with over 75% of the country through all the rivers that meet and run along the Mississippi River. And we still transport things across the ocean. We found that out during COVID when things were shut down in China and a lot of the goods that we rely on on a daily basis stopped coming over. Then once you have, there's just that idea. Then, because of the world we live in now, we like to have a lot of things delivered to our door. So that has increased the need and the necessity for delivering services. So whether that's UPS, the Postal Service, uh, FedEx, 
Um, I'm blanket, uh, blanking on one that does worldwide delivery right now, and I'll remember it later on when it is least beneficial for everyone. So that's what we mean. So just in transportation of goods, you set up you know, getting uh, materials and products from point A to point B, and then you have other companies who get it from point B to point C. All right, the last part of this, which we kind of teased before, which is the marketing of goods, right? So this is the idea that you try and drum up support for people to go like, oh, I have, I have to have that, right? So marketing goods and services can fall, well, first is how people actually get those goods and services. So um, like we said, you have self-service versus standard packing. So self-service is what you get when you go out to a store, when you go to the grocery store. You don't go into, there used to be stores that you would go in and you'd hand a list to somebody and they go, they go into the back and they get everything collected for you and bring it out. Or in this case, is if you do curbside delivery. That's, a, that's um, a, an idea of what things used to be like before you just walk in and take things off the shelf. So depending on how you shop, um, if you, for instance, you go into Walmart, you grab things off the shelves, then you go through the self-checkout line, that is 100% self-service. Um, now you have like standard packing, where is, that's like curbside delivery. You send a list off to somebody, somebody in the store grabs everything for you, checks you out, and then they put it in your car. You don't touch any items until you get home. Also, standard packing would be delivery to your door as well. So when other people get the product and get it to you and you just pay arbitrarily in somewhere, either on the internet or to one person and everything is brought to you, that's standard packing. You have wholesale, which is like, that's like a Costco or like a Sam's Club. You go in, and it's like a warehouse and you just grab things off of these giant pallets. And typically because you're n they're not going from, uh, they're just being delivered straight off the truck and they're not going through some other process, you get them a little cheaper. And as we've been talking about this whole time is internet sales. So now we live in a world where you don't even have to go into a store from your home or from your phone, you can buy something and it's brought directly to you wherever you tell them to bring it to. So there are, so again, in this cycle that 
distri- trying to get goods to the consumer creates, we've now added stores, whether that's online or stores you actually walk into or even, um, or even just people that you send into a store to get the things for you. Finally, we come to advertising, and this is the, not the very last thing, because there's always new innovations happening in how we get goods from the manufacturer to you. But advertising is there so that you think to yourself, I have to have that product. If there's good advertising, then everyone is going to want to buy that. So whether that, so it might be something that you see on, uh, when you're watching a game on TV, or it might be an ad that, you're, that pops up as you're scrolling through, or it might just be word of mouth. That's also advertising as well uh, from all the normal things that you would see around, around your, the world that you live in. So, you know, for example, there's not, a bunch of, there's not a bunch of TV commercials or internet ads for Air Jordans. It's word of mouth that spreads that around. Same, well, I can't say that about iPhones. There's constant iPhone commercials. But even now, and I, you know, eventually it'll die out. But word of mouth is, is that now everybody has to have the Stanley thermos, right? Whereas, you know, two years ago, that wasn't a thing. Now it is. But it's not like you're being inundated with a bunch of TV ads and internet ads saying you have to have this. It's, you see somebody with it, you're like, ooh, I want that. So that creates this chain reaction that then turns into this big thing where you have uh, people buying hundreds of thousands of units of this product. And we will leave it there.